Hello and welcome to Dinosaurs Before There Were Fuels. This is the show where we cover the latest discoveries in dinosaurs. We're back after a quick vacation for Labor Day. I'm your host, Ayaz Akhtar, and today, fire, extinction, body temperature, a stocky dragon, and hunchback dinosaur. But first, some corrections. Brian Sweetak sent in some notes on our last episode. One, mosasaurs were not marine dinosaurs like I said, they were marine lizards like today's monitor lizards. Two, pterosaurs are not flying dinosaurs, pterosaurs are archosaurs. That group includes dinosaurs, crocodiles and more, but they are not dinosaurs. And finally, the video of the flying animal is simply a frigate bird. Here's a picture of a frigate bird and you can see the confusion. A big thanks to Brian for sending in this information, I really appreciate it. I'm a dinosaur enthusiast, so any help from you guys in the dinosaur field is totally appreciated. Let's hit the news because there is a lot of it. The Isle of Wight has a huge number of fossils compared to other parts of the world. Ever wonder why this place is unique? The weather may have been the key. According to a new study by the University of Portsmouth, over 130 million years ago, the weather was very volatile at the Isle of Wight. Fires followed by a flood created a very preserved scene. Hot and dry weather caused a higher likelihood of fire caused by lightning. After the fire, flooding could be caused by heavy rains. This combination would sweep dinosaur remains all together. Some folks over at the California Institute of Technology may be able to find out if dinosaurs were warm or cold-blooded animals using some isotopes. So here's how this would work. These isotopes grouped together depended on temperature. So where are these isotopes then? Tooth enamel. Tests were performed using elephants, rhinos, you know, animals you can find today. And using this method, temperatures were predicted and found to be very accurate. Then tests were performed on a woolly mammoth. Some are not quite sure if this research will find definitive results. I guess we'll find out in the long run. It's widely thought that a single impact caused the extinction of dinosaurs. Some new evidence is suggesting that there was not just one impact, but many, and these impacts occurred over the course of thousands of years. This new evidence comes from two impacts within the same crater in the Ukraine. In other impact related news, research on the apple genome suggests that the apple, the fruit, may be the product of the same impact that is thought to have killed the dinosaurs. You know, I wasn't even aware that it was an apple genome project, but if it's linked to dinosaurs, well, that's pretty cool. You ever get a puzzle and wonder how all the pieces go together? Well, that's how a lot of scientists felt about the Ballard Bonduk. Uh, a couple of specimens from the animal had been found years ago, but its unusual morphology created a problem. No one really knew how exactly all the parts fit together. However, a recently discovered skeleton had enough parts that actually allowed for a reconstruction of the Ballard Bonduk. So how big was it? Well, its name gives you a clue, it means stocky dragon, and the bee bondock was about as big as an oversized turkey at around six to seven feet long. They were carnivores and had double claws on their feet, which could be used for slashing. Fused bones in the hands also suggest that the bee bondock used its legs for grasping as well. Our last story is about a new dinosaur called the Concavenator corcovatus. This guy was found in Spain, and the first thing you'll notice is its unusual fin on its back. This is the first time a hunchback style dinosaur has been found. Now that fin isn't just some crest made out of skin or something. It is made of two vertebra before the hip area. So what is the hump for? The function is still unknown as of right now. Also of interest is the concavenator also had quill knobs on its forearms. Quill knobs usually hold feathers. So the dinosaur bird connection theory gains more strength. And that does it for this episode of Dinosaurs Before There Were Fuels. So here's some show news. The studio is getting some renovations. So the next episode may not look exactly the same, but I'm still aiming to get the show out every other Tuesday at dinoshow.com. If I'm late, sorry folks, I'm trying, I promise. I'm Ayaz Akhtar, and I will see you in two weeks. Thank you for watching.